What's going on, everybody? Joshua Cook back for another edition of St. Pius 10th Football with the man, the myth, legend himself, Greg Granfill. Coach, uh, nice win for you all last week, 41-35 over Lamarck. Uh, kind of got a little interesting there at the end as Lamarck kind of worked its way back into the game. Did you like, though, how your guys, you know, even though Lamarck was making a comeback, y'all you know, got the stand when y'all needed to at the end? Got a big fourth down conversion there with a minute left to go, and so played some pivotal football there at the end. Yeah, and, and I think you're. You, I mean, you need to be in those situations early in the year to see how your team will respond. And I think we've been in those situations to this point, which helped us, you know, because um, man, the dam broke for a second, and instead of panicking, those kids just went back to to doing the things that we normally do to be successful and, and made the plays that we had to make in the critical situations. So I was proud of them for not panicking. You know, I always tell them, don't flinch. Whatever situation comes in front of you, don't flinch. Act like that you knew it was happening or it was a possibility and we have a plan to get out of it. And that's exactly what our kids did. I was real proud of our seniors uh, for the way that they, you know, that they, they were leading. I was, I was paying real close attention to that sideline and guys like Bryce McKeon and Issa Baba and Aiden Allen that were over there just telling everybody, just keep doing your job, just keep doing your job, just keep doing your job. And uh, eventually, you know, we got out of there. We, as soon as it hit zeros, I said, run, run for the bus as fast as you can because I don't want them to put any more time back on that clock. And, 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 and I was proud of our kids and our coaches. So big win for y'all. Y'all moved to two and two on the season. Uh, you're raising Kane's Kaniac Co-Offensive Players of the Week. And I, th I think this might be the first time, and we've done this show for three years now, I think this might be the first time that the entire offensive line gets the Kaniac Co-Offensive Player of the Week. Zero sacks allowed, 75% run effic efficiency, and they helped get y'all to 218 yards rushing on the night talk about those guys up front what push they gave and especially the protection to not allow any sacks right and and after the woodlands christian game you know we, we met as a as a coaching staff and and basically talked about where do we want to go i mean we knew we had some weapons on offense um uh, but we just we just felt like in certain situations in the in the previous games that our hands were tied and we wanted to rely on the guys that have proven to be um, performing well, and that was our offensive line. So we kind of put on a couple of, uh, of new formations and new sets and told the offensive line, we're, we're going to ride you, you know, we're going to ride you. And, and they were okay with it, and they were excited about it. You know, we hadn't, we hadn't rushed for, for 20 or 30 yards the previous couple of games and then came out and rushed for 200, you know. Um, there was a, quite a few guys that could have made – that offensive player of the game, you know, we had Nate Alvarez who caught two touchdown passes, who played both offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, he, he was outstanding. You had Bryce McKeon who threw for 200 and plus yards. And then there were a couple of receivers that made big plays in, in, in certain situations with, uh, with um, Justice Prince caught a touchdown. Uh, Jackson Mobley caught a big ball in a, in a big situation, and then Vincent Doucette, same thing. So there were quite a few guys that could have done it. And then obviously our running back, Josh Mitchell, who gave the ball to uh, over 35 times to rush for 200 yards. Um, he's probably like, what do I have to do to get offensive player of the week? Uh, but he did an, an amazing job, and I was proud of him. But I think the combination of 75% run efficiency with no sacks uh, it, there was, it was a no-brainer for me uh, with, with that offensive line. And, and, you know, you've got Chase Stepp, you've got Travis Avant, Adrian Narvaez, Jeremiah Tarver, and Issa Baba, um, as well as our H-back, who is uh, Nathan Alvarez, and our tight end, uh, Alex Velasquez, who all had critical, cr critical uh, blocks in, 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 in extreme situations. Heck, that fourth down situation, we pulled one out of last year and just said Aiden and got Aiden from the defensive side and said we're loading up the right side, go clear us a hole for and get one yard. And that's exactly what Josh did. He got right behind Aiden and uh, picked up the necessary yard to move the chain. So we were proud of the resiliency and the fight that our guys showed. I was, I was real happy with that. You mentioned Aiden Allen, and, you know, he's kind of starting to pop on this year. 
Maniac defensive player of the week thing pretty often, and he's a he's going to start flirting with uh, Carson Hintz level here pretty soon of how many times his name is on this yeah. sheet. But eight full tackles, quarterback pressure, and, he, and you talk about maybe one of the biggest plays of the game is him coming on in on the offensive side of the ball and clearing a hole for y'all to get a yard or two needed late in the game to seal the win. And and I think I think you're exactly right, and and it just goes to show that. Aiden's stat line is is so long. I mean, obviously we know when it comes to tackles and all that stuff, it's going to be deep with the how many numbers, but it's all the 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 whole package of what he can provide. You know, when he's not getting a sack, he's got quarterback pressure. When he's not putting on quarterback pressure, he's got the, the run what we call run pressure, where you don't necessarily always have to make the tackle, but you're in a position to make the play and cause the back to dump into somebody else's lap. Um, so it's a guy that's grading out upwards of right around 90%. Um, and for the position that he plays, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty serious uh, and, and well-deserved honor. Um, he's doing everything that we're asking to, plus just a little bit more. So we're proud of what he's done. Yeah, you talk about you know, stats and for defensive players. And, of course, yeah, I mean, everyone always looks at the tackles and the sacks and yeah. stuff like that. But, you know, one play that comes to mind from last night, I was watching Monday Night Football, and there was a play where, you know, Josh Allen was back getting ready to throw for the Bills. And uh, I can't remember who they were playing at the time, but, you know, the defensive end just essentially bull rushed the left tackle and pushed him just straight back into the quarterback where essentially Allen was hit when he threw now, that might be come down yep. to quarterback pressure or something like that, but sometimes it's those plays. It's not a sack. It's not a tackle, but you're disrupting what's happening in the backfield where the quarterback can't stay on time. Right. There were a couple of plays, Josh, the other night where you could actually see offensive linemen uh, communicating with each other. And on the snap of the ball, Aiden would have three people converge. And I'm, I'm not joking there. Uh, three people converge on him, which – is, is a sign of respect, and then it opens lanes for our backers and our safeties to come and have the ability to make the tackle. So that, that's, that's a huge part in what we do. Yeah, it's a huge part of what you do uh, for sure. Um, not going to lie, I accidentally dropped my phone on my oh, – there we go, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> – so behind the scenes, Coach Cranfield sends me this little picture every week of the of the players of the week and stuff, and I was trying to grab my phone to open it again. Somehow dropped it on my laptop. I hit a button. I didn't even know. I guess I can turn my camera off with my computer. Yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> Learn something new every week. So, hey, everybody, I'm back for the show well, again. Welcome uh, back. I thought, really... to, I thought I was fixed to have to carry you for another couple of minutes there, buddy. So. I, I thought. I thought maybe so. Uh, special teams player of the week, Preston Kyle, five for six on yeah. – PATs average 40 and a half yards punting. Uh, good night for him. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I mean, I've told people, you know, who's one of the biggest weapons that we have. And right now it's Preston that, that, that can flip the field in a situation where we may be backed up and can put the ball on the other side of the field uh, with, with an amazing leg that he has, uh, both with kickoffs and punt. I mean, a 40, 41-yard average is pretty pretty serious stuff and we're not talking rugby style kicking where the ball's landing 20 yards down the field and rolling for for 25 more this kid is popping balls up with hang times upwards of, of four almost five and allowing our coverage units to get down there and make plays so been real excited about it. and see that's that's one of the things that Preston had to work on from last year to this year he could always kick the ball uh deep but the height of his kickoffs has dramatically changed and the height and hang time of his punts have dramatically changed and that all allows our coverage units those extra additional tenths of seconds to get down there and be in the right spot and so we've been real excited and pleased with the the his performance so far this year you mentioned uh, earlier you know two and two on the season getting ready to go in against bishop dunn this week on the road um and then you get a bye week before opening district play against a what has come out to be a very hot Concordia Lutheran football team to start the season. Yeah. Um, injury bug a little bit right now. Do you feel like, you know, next man up, I always hear that 
with coaches, right? It's always next man up, next man up. Are you seeing guys step up into those roles right now for those guys that are you know, get, getting mended on, mending right now? Yeah, and I think it's it's learning learning while the fire is burning. You know what I mean? So um, because we've got some guys that are playing that we we didn't like you said earlier in the year didn't have them penciled in as starters, but have stepped up and uh, and and they're getting their feet wet and 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 just and playing their tails off and and that's all we ask. You know, is the fact of when we go to our offensive and defensive meetings and we're watching video or doing chalk talk or anything like that, they've got to prepare every moment like that they are a starter. Uh, because, I mean, Friday night we lose a starting safety, uh, maybe the second or third play of the game. I mean, he's done. Can't, doesn't play the rest of the night. Um, so there was a guy on the sidelines that went into that game thinking that he was a backup that played 45 snaps. Um, and, and that's why we always tell them every, every practice – prepare like you're going to play the entire game um, because we've had that happen a couple of times this year, you know, uh, with H Jose's early injury, it happened early in the first quarter. So then we had guys that did not plan on playing a tremendous amount that, that day that it were thrown right into the middle of the fire and had to perform. Um, so been proud of the way that our team has responded in those situations. And we're doing a great job of lifting each other up as opposed to breaking each other down. And that's, that's why we're able to get through some of those uh, severe situations. Yeah, I was, you, you kind of answered a little bit. I was going to ask, you know, this whole next man up mentality. And, you know, I know coaches say it a lot. And, of course, you can tell a kid that, be like, hey, you, next man up. How, right. do you, how do you see kids, like, do you watch as they prepare during the week? Like, if – they are ready. Like it, it's almost like one of those things that you have to be game ready. Like even though like you might not be on the depth chart, you might be number two, but you right. always have to be ready. How do you, as a coach, how do you not only just convey that message, but if you don't see them doing, it, how do you get them to get into that mentality? Right, and we're no different than any other team around in the fact that we video every rep of every practice, and then part of part of what we do is we go back and we grade every, every play of every practice. Um, with the, the way that we work our depth chart, guys that we feel like having a, a chance to play, we've got to see them on film. Even if they are considered a backup on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, um, they still need reps in practice so that if we do throw them into the game, that they at least have a fighting chance of knowing that they've been in those situations in practice and they know exactly how to respond in those situations. So through that film, our twos get graded and get coached just like the ones do. Now, do they get as many reps? No, because time won't allow that. But they're still going to get reps. They're still going to get uh, uh, um, individual time with their coaches. So that way, when we do put them out there, it's not a coach, what do I do situation. It, it, it is a, a um, situation in which they go, okay, now it's my turn. I've been through this situation in practice, and I'm ready for whatever happens. Um, you know, are, are there going to be situations in which we throw a kid out into the, uh, a position? Sure. I mean, like, like I said, throwing Aiden out there, um, he hadn't done that since last year. Um, but I understand that if Aiden goes out there and makes a mistake, it's not really on Aiden. Maybe I shouldn't have put him in that situation. But when you have a senior captain that, that's as talented as he is, I trust him and I put him out there in that situation, and it worked out, you know. So um, I think that's what it comes down to as well. Yeah, I think in, the, in this business we call that the heavy package, right? You that's you right. The heavy that's package exactly right. out there. Yeah, I promise if you saw it on video, you would go, even if you didn't know football, you would go, I bet they're running right there. And whoever would have said that would have been exactly right because that's exactly where we were running, you know. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's fun coaching guys that have the mentality of, Coach, tell me what you want. Tell me what you need. Tell me what I can do to make this team better, and I'll do it. And that's what we have. We have a locker room full of guys that are just saying, Coach, whatever I can do, I'll do it. And, and, and if that means a sacrifice on my end, 
then by gosh, I will do it. We've got wide receivers that say, Coach, if you want me to play defensive back, then I'll play defensive back if it helps the team. Now you got to think, a wide receiver is probably going to get his name in the paper because of how many catches and how many yards or whatever it is. And for those guys that sacrifice that to go, if we need me on defense, then, Coach, I'll play defense. And, and I think that's exciting, you know. We've got offensive linemen that are going, Coach, if you need me, uh, you know, because of the depth issues that we're having at defensive line, just let me know and I'll go do it. And, and, and that's an exciting part uh, of coaching, just to know that the culture of the program is there's a whole lot more we and a lot less me when it comes to what our kids are, are thinking. Yeah, that's always that's always a good we over the me because a lot of times these days, you know, it's a lot of me, 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 and my highlight, oh, this yeah. highlight, you know, getting putting this on huddle or whatever it may be. Um, right. Final question before I let you go. You know, you get Bishop done this week, then it's a bye week, then it's district, and we've talked over the last couple of weeks. Like, okay, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? And I know right now, you know, got some injury issues, rotating guys in and out. What is the biggest thing? that you want to see in this final game before district? Because now, essentially, you get this game, and then you get two full weeks to get ready for Concordia Lutheran. Correct. So I think the main thing that we're after is to try to stay healthy because we, we don't need any more uh, guys standing in street clothes on Friday nights. We've, we've got plenty of those right now. Um, so we want guys just to continue to go out there and fight. Um, you know, one, one of our defensive coaches um, – said the other day if i've seen you do something in practice and then you don't do it on game film on friday there's a, a significant disconnect i mean there's got to be a reason and that reason is all up in between your head you know because if you know how to do it then then you should go do it uh whether it's the pressure that you put on yourself the pressure of the situation or just thinking. And, and one of the things I tell the guys, listen, too many of you think that when there's an option B, and it goes back to what Nick Saban says when it talks about being a champion, it, it takes what it takes. You can't find an alternate way or an alternate route. This is a one-way road. You know, going back to uh, Yellowstone, Rip, he said that train runs one way. You know, and I think that's what that's what we as coaches have to convey to these guys. So it's another – this game is another opportunity for us to, to, to just reiterate, go out there, and if you make a mistake, be, be it a mistake that I have told you or one of your coaches have told you exactly what to do, and it didn't work out. That way the blame comes back on me. But if on, in video you can answer it. And on practice tape, you're doing it. And then on Friday night, you are not. Then, then I want that fixed. And I think that's what we're, uh, you know, our, our motive is this week, is just understanding of, 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 of the, the, the importance of going out and doing your job. And I know it's so simple. You know, Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, do your job. Do your, I mean, I know that sounds so coaching cliche but the reality of it is wherever you are whether it's at work at home or at on the football field do your job and and, and good things will happen and and that's what we're trying to the message that we're trying to send to these kids yeah i mean it's a it's essentially it's a good life lesson too right just absolutely do your job do yeah. what you're do what you're supposed to do you know you're supposed to be there at eight. You're there at eight. If you're supposed to work till yep. five, work till five. If you, you know, do your job. And you know, it's interesting you talk about the the we over me mentality, and it made me think about uh, this movie. I don't know if you've seen it before. It's called Hacksaw Ridge. It's a right. war movie. Yep, fantastic film. And you talk about we over me. It's a. I guarantee anyone that hasn't seen it needs to go see it. It's essentially it's a World War II film about an army medic who will not pick up a gun. He will not pick up a rifle in battle. And so they were like, okay, well, you're going to go into battle without a gun, without a rifle. You're going to go be a medic, but you're going to be in the field with no weapon. And this is Hacksaw Ridge, and they have to climb this big rope thing. And he ends up being the hero at the end that's carrying all of his, his platoon out that are injured. He's yep. 
getting one more, one more, one more. And that made me think of that, that we versus me kind of mentality. So hadn't seen Hacksaw Absolutely. Ridge. Good movie. Go see it. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and, and, you know, it goes back, to, you know, I worked for Coach Brian Irwin, uh, who was at Marcus, and then he was at, he was, had a couple state championships at Lamarck, actually. Um, but one of the things that, that Brian would always tell all, all of his teams is when it comes to your job, here's what I want. I want you to do what you're supposed to, when you're supposed to, and do it the same way every time. And, and that, that is simple, you know, but understand that in life and in football, there's always going to be people that are, that are trying to get you from, from doing that. So the strong-willed people and the strong-charactered people will fight all of those evil demons that tell them, don't do that, do this, and then stay the course. And I think it's, like you said, it's a great life lesson. You know, do what you're supposed to, when you're supposed to, and do it the same way every time. And that's what builds consistency with football teams. And that's also what builds the, the, the fact of, of trust, knowing that you've got guys that are going to be there for you when, when the time is called. So, And that's how we'll end it this week. Just air quote, just do your job. I love it, man. That's all you got to do. That's, right. that's all you got to do. People always ask, they're like, how's Westlake, Austin Westlake go win three straight state championships? How's North Shore won four out of five years? I guarantee you, we go to them and they say they do their job. That's it. That's what they do. That's they exactly right. All right. Well, he is Coach Greg Cranfield on Bishop Dunn this week. And then they get next week off. I mean, I know they'll still practice, but no game next week. But we'll still have a show. So we'll be back next week. Right. Same time, same place. Coach, uh, best of luck this week as you uh, hit the road. Appreciate you, brother. Go Panthers.